Karen Schmidt, and um, we're here today to talk about sacred space and beauty and the importance of art in the church. And today I have two wonderful guests. Um, I have Maya Lisa Engelhart, and I have um, Roberta Amundsen. And so I'd like you to introduce yourselves. I'm Roberta Amundsen. I'm, uh, well, I'm, I'm not an artist. Uh, except that I do, I have done a lot of interior design work in um, spaces that I've had the privilege to own and design, and also I design tabletops, um, which I suppose is my visual art form. Um, but more than that, I, I love art, and um, I've loved it since I was a, a child, a, a visual art. And I suppose painting is the art form I love the very most. I think it's because so much is happening on the canvas. Mm -hmm. The layers, um, the colors, it, I'm, I never tire of looking at paintings. I love other forms of art too, and so what I do, I was a journalist um, by background, but I, I think and I read and I visit um, art museums and built churches, buildings, um, and I, uh, I write and I speak about the uh, connection between mostly Christian faith and art and culture. So that's what I do. And in doing that, I had the uh, joy and honor to meet um, Maya and her, her husband, Peter Brandes. And uh, Maya was a, the surprise, because I had first seen Peter's work, and we got to know him, and then I found out that there was a big and wonderful surprise waiting, which was meeting Maya. And, uh, and seeing her work, which I love very, very much, uh, as I think she knows. But I'm gonna let Maya tell you who she is. Thank you, Roberta. I am a Danish painter, uh, and since I was a little girl, the only thing I really knew was that I want to be a painter. And there was no one in the family, no one ever who, who had that feeling. And my parents, they didn't really care. They wanted me just to do maybe something else, but I had that gift. I, I thought it was a gift because I could take stones, I could take the flowers that I knew, I could take the birds, I could paint it, I could draw it. And it's, for me it was a miracle to, to, to take a little leaf and take a little flower and, and do a watercolor and, and it was exactly that. It was like a miracle for me. It's, just later, when you grow up, that you can see it's not enough. It's not enough to paint an apple. The apple have to, you have to have the feeling of tasting it, the smell of it. There is, there's art coming in. Yeah. So, but f as a child, it was my luck in my life, because in the school, I was not that good in mathematics and things like that, but I could draw. So every time there was problems or things that have to be drawn, it was me. It was, it was a gift for me yeah. that made me like a little bit floating, a little bit. <laughs> I have made hundreds and hundreds of drawings for my girlfriends in the school of horses and uh, everything, just to, and dogs and cats and animals. And, and that was, it, it was a beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, a great and the beginning is easy. It's not later, it's getting really hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, I know you're interest, um, influenced by landscape painters. And were you doing landscapes more at the beginning of your art? Um, and and uh, tell us about, about that, how your art progressed. The landscape, when I look back, I have some of my early works. It's mm -hmm. always landscape, mm -hmm. always. It's birds, it's flowers, it's stones, it's the, it's the sea, it's the soil, it's only landscapes. When I did uh, some human beings, it was just for fun for my sisters and for, for some of my girlfriends, mm -hmm. but it was landscapes, it was light, it was really the flowers that I, I know every, every, on my way to school, I knew where the special flowers was, I knew the names, and, and in Denmark we have, a gift in that way that we have the seasons. We have yes. the cold winters where the daylight is such a little tiny thing 
and the longing for the light. Yeah. When in January the lark is coming, when you hear the sound of the lark, then you know, oh, now we are going uh, the right direction. <laughs> and we are so much attached to, to the seasons in Denmark. And, and all my work ever have been about the landscape and this longing for, for the light and for, for the blossom and, and the fall when when all the flowers are getting into all those fantastic uh, red and orange. And, and, and this whole uh, way, this circle, is very important for me. And still it is. Yes. That's my source. I, it, it's, it comes through in your work so beautifully. And that is a beautiful analogy to work into spiritual things, because Christ is the light, and you your work is, um, you have an amazing way of working with light and that, that's very powerful. So how did you start um, painting work that was of a more, I guess it's all spiritual, I don't want to separate that mm. out, but um, uh, work for the church, how did that come about? And um, Take my questions and use them however you wish, but I, because I'm not sure uh, how to tease out this this thing, how your art progressed, and then how you uh, saw the spiritual part come into it, or was that always there in your mind? The, the first work I saw of Maya's, I'm, we were talking about this, and I, I think that is the first work I saw. Um, what was a series of paintings that Maya did of the history of Denmark in the Parliament building mm -hmm. um, in, in, in Copenhagen. And uh, they, they, we, they, you want to go into that landscape. You want to walk into that painting. They, mm -hmm. they draw you in. They make you want to go there. It's a place you want to be. You want to see what's around the corner. And of course, the corner is a a slash of wonderful color that you see, but they draw you in. And then I found that Maya was engaged in doing um, a lot of work in churches and, um, and got to see several of those churches. And also uh, Maya's uh, done you know, shows in New York every, about every year and a half it is. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I got to see those shows, but those shows were a series of painting through the days of creation, which relates to that love of the land and, and creation once again. So maybe um, how did you get involved in doing churches and were you, did you do mostly, you know, I don't even know this, Maya. Um, <laughs> did you start, how did, where did you start, did you first just start shows in Denmark and then you got yeah. commissions and, and then, anyway, how did that all happen? I went to an art school in in uh, Odense, the center of uh, Denmark, where I was about two years, just to have the material in my hand. We are out from a poor family. My parents didn't help me. So I had to go to a school just to learn some technical things, just to have the possibility to buy canvas and have all this just next to me. And then I really painted and painted and painted. And then I waited and I met Peter. Uh, I was about 24 years old. He is 12 years older. And he wanted so badly to tell me how to do. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, you are not allowed to see whatever I do. So the first five years we lived together, we lived in Paris. He didn't see one single thing that I did because I didn't want him to, to say, you, I think you have to go this direction or this direction. So I was hiding, locking the door. He didn't see anything. <laughs> and then one day. Good for you, yeah. Maya. <laughs> so I kept it five years. And it was not easy. When we have okay. visitors and they came <laughs> and they say, what are you Me doing? Too. I said, mm, I'm painting too. But I, I wouldn't show it. So it was, it was not easy. But I was so happy that I waited. I waited mm -hmm. until my moment. And right. when I think about my whole life, what is going on? What is has happening? It's every time I have to wait to my moment, to be silent, to, to wait for this is my moment. And suddenly it was my moment. An art historian came to our house 
a, a lovely lady, and she said to me, Maya, I don't leave the house before I see what you are doing. <laughs> so she seems quite serious. <coughs> so let us then go up. I was on the second floor in the little space up there. And then I showed her for the first time uh, all the things I have been doing. And she said, this uh, next year, we will have your first show. And I will write a text. And this is what we are going to do. And then I say yes, because I, this was the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then we started, and from that moment, because I think it was the right moment, it, it went really yeah. well, yeah. because I have the courage to wait. Yes. And then I had the first exhibition. It was in, in a very beautiful place in Copenhagen, an old church just that wasn't used for uh, service anymore, mm -hmm. so it was a lovely space to exhibit. And um, I had my first show there called uh, Illuminations. And from there on, it, the uh, one exhibition, one motive took each other. And always it had to be that I was listening to what I had to do. And then mm -hmm. I started with this illumination. And then there was a, a way through a landscape, and then suddenly there came a, a burning bush in yeah. my series of painting. Mm -hmm. And I had a, the first, one of the first exhibitions in, in New York where I have those burning bush, uh, big paintings. And then there was a Danish priest who went to uh, New York and saw my paintings, and he said, oh, this, I want so badly ah. this one, to my church. Not like the older piece, because it was an old one, but at the side wall, he mm -hmm. would love mm -hmm. to have that. And then there was a big um, foundation who gave him the money. So the, the painting went home to Denmark to the first little church, wow. where it still uh, is uh, on, on the wall. And then the neighbor priest came <laughs> and saw that, and I said, I want you to make an altar piece. And that was a scale on church. That was the first oh. real decoration mm -hmm. in the church, where I made an altar piece and a carpet where you kneel down in, in the Danish Protestant Lutheran churches. And I make all the coloring uh, in, in the church. In the so that was the first, and yeah. so it has been. Then yes. the other one saw, and then... Wow. So, so, that's so in that first church, on. what was the image in the carpet, and what was the image on the altarpiece? When I came in this little church, from outside, it's very beautiful. You have seen the churches in Denmark. They yeah, are goodness. often in. It's an, uh, a, a very old uh, church from the 11th century, so it's very beautiful from outside. Then you come in, then you see it's a dark brown, and, and all the benches was dark green, and, and very like, oh, you get <laughs> yeah. really nice. Yes. And then you yeah. saw the altarpiece, and there was a Christ, a really sad Christ hanging with his face down here, very dark, really dark. Everything was so dark in that space, and, and a red uh, carpet up to the... It was so disturbing, and it was so badly... Uh, uh, really, the sense you got in this was you got really tired and and uh, very negative. And then I asked the priest, "Let me be alone in this room." And he went out. He already started to say, "I think you should," and said, "Don't go out, please." And then I had an hour where I sat there. And then when I'm silent, and again this, I w I'm waiting for the moment and be totally silent. And like Kierkegaard, the silence, the obedience, and then the joy. I was sitting here mm -hmm. and took the room in, let the room talk to me, and then suddenly I could see, what am I going to do here? And I saw the paintings. I really saw it. Mm -hmm. And I, I made the newly made tanker, uh, the, when Christ is just so sensitive, he's really like, uh, and Maria Magdalene tried to, but I don't make Maria Magdalene. I want you to be Maria Magdalene. I only make the silhouette of, of the Christ who is in his resurrection. And he's so, um, it, the only thing I can make is the silhouette and light from back. Behind. Mm -hmm. Like when she saw him, she couldn't see him. He, um, she couldn't see his, physical, 
structure because he is having the light from from behind, and and that was what I should do here. And and then all the colors I saw, and then on the carpet I just saw it, really saw it that it had to be the Jacob's fight of the angel. But I don't make a figure, and I I just make some. I made some wings. I made some fragments. Um, I don't. I can't. I, I never make a scenery, because for me the Bible is not about scenes. I, I want the one who looks at it to finish it. I make it open, so I don't tell a story, because for me the the face is about. It's so personal. So I don't give any answers. I more give questions. So if you kneel down and you get the wine and you get the little bread and you see here the, the bone and you see the wings and you can have the feeling there is a, a fight going on, then you have to, to question yourself. What is this and what, what is my relation to this? And then you look up and here you see this figure like you are Maria Magdalene who, who see this and you have to ask yourself, do I believe in this or not? I don't give the answer. That's the whole, the whole point in all what I'm doing in, yes. in now the 25 the churches in Denmark. That you have to, to be the one who, did, are the one who, open your heart for, mm -hmm. for the work. It's just what character that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I there is a quote in the book that. Um, I can find this quickly that strikes me. There was a time when you were um, uh, looking at a rock with a big eagle with a white tail mm -hmm. by the ocean, and it was something that you wanted to remember um, really well. It was a, 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 fascination, a fascination with what you can't see, but with what you can feel. Mm -hmm. And um, and then there, and I feel like you do that in all of your work. It's, it's something that is, uh, you can almost see. Um, the other is, um, I have been fumbling through my paintings too much, but it's that, um, that God reveals himself, but you can't see his face. And, and so um, your work is, I don't know that ethereal is the right word because it's more substantive than that. Yeah. It's much more substantive than that. But but what you do with light and that figure calls you to you, just into it. You can't help but but long to know that that Christ to to be drawn in and um, drawn to the light. And the light just it doesn't vibrate, but it's brighter. It's like the power of God's light is shining in that yeah. light. And you, you see it and you want to come to it. Um, maybe like a moth to the, to the light. Mm -hmm. and, and I see that in your work um, so well. So it's really helpful to hear that process. And um, it's a very spiritual work for you, obviously. Well, it's, you know, I, I, it's, Maya's work is an invitation. Yes. It's, mm -hmm. Yes. It's, it's an invitation that. for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, to come. the viewer. She's, as mm -hmm. she said, she's not telling you. <laughs> it's not didactic in that mm -hmm. sense at all. Um, but it's an invitation mm -hmm. for you to come in and find out. And, um, and even in the days of creation, it's inviting you to, to if, if you could do time travel or whatever, to step in to see what it, to experience and see and learn what it was like when God said, let there be light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it invites you to come in and, and inquire um, about what that was about and what it means. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's one of the identifying, I was going to say unique, but I, that's a risky word. It, it's, it's one of the things that's a identifying quality of Maya's work. It's yes. an invitation for you to go deeper, to get more involved in the work and in what it's about. So it keeps on. We can look at it and then look at it again and then not see it for days and come in and 
you see something else, you go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the beauty is so... But can you imagine how difficult it is to, to do this work? How humble I have to be? How much I have to put myself away? Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. I go into my work and, and I don't ever be... Uh, never know what I'm doing. I don't want to know what I'm doing. But I go in my studio every morning in Paris, locking the door. I have no windows. <laughs> I have light from only oven and uh, some a little bird flight over here. But there's nothing, and I have to start off with a white canvas. And I want so badly. I really want so badly to to do this, but I can't. And I start, and I just make backgrounds. I make backgrounds 14 days, 15 days, 16 days, mm -hmm. and and I'm so stressed and I'm so negative and I I I, I, I can really see what I what I can't do. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. I s see that I call myself a painter. How is this? How should it be so? But I can't do anything. Yeah. And the day I give up, the day I am like a little empty vessel. Sit down in, in 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 my chair, and I give up. Yeah. Suddenly, this little whistle. Then there's something coming in. Then I'm a mirror, silent like a mirror, and something can reflect in it. And then I do my paintings. And then after that, I really can't tell. But then I feel that it's a duty, and I feel that I shall, and I do what I what I have to do. Mm -hmm. This feeling, when my face is making this warmth in my whole, like I'm an, I'm an whole thing where I'm, I do this painting. There's no distance between me and the canvas and I have no thoughts, I just do what I have to do. And then the, the painting is finished. And then I, do, I really don't want to see that again because I'm finished, I don't want to look at it, to know what I'm doing, mm -hmm. because you don't have to, go in a selfie with your work. So uh, I just go out on my studio and then I know I have done what I, what I have to do. But those 14 or 15 or 16 or days before that, it's not really easy. But mm -hmm. I know I have to be like this. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you have to tell it away. It's like a, a, a Lord's Prayer every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. And before I come to this, let you mm -hmm. will be the one. Yeah. then I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. And it's a big thing to, to try to make a, a silhouette of Christ. And I thank God that no one ever did a portrait of him when he was alive, mm -hmm. because you don't have to know him, you have to believe him. Yes. So if someone had made his portrait, you were already... Uh, then it's, for me, it's not a historical person. It's a, it's a person for the faith. Mm -hmm. And it's the longest step. And this step you have to do yourself. And that's why when I go to those churches, I meet some very strange people sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big board. You cannot just come and say, I want to do this and this. Yes. And you really have to discuss and you have to. But I never change what I have seen. This I can never change. But mm -hmm. I can talk and I can try to explain, I can give a little key, I can open a little door. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I have to be a very good mood. Otherwise I say <laughs> goodbye, mm -hmm. you have to find another one. No, because mm -hmm. you are working about two years, three years sometimes with, a, with those big commissions in the churches. And, and you meet the most, I must say, the most lovely people I ever met. Mm -hmm. are people around the church and, and the beds too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. so strange. No, no, there's a lot right. of uh, right. fight going on. Mm -hmm. and, um, but then you come from outside and then you go again. And you, you have this feeling that you have done what you had to do. Yeah. And they speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, speak the, I'm thinking of uh, herning, mm -hmm. which is... Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that I know one of the beautiful people that you've met. Mm -hmm. um, There's a woman named Bitten, yeah. um, who's just 
wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, and there were some tough points along the way with that church, as I know. And it's a beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. church. But of course, I saw the finished product. Um, and there were some, some points along the way. And Bitten got it. Mm -hmm. um, she got what you were trying to do. Yeah. But the rest of the people have to come along mm -hmm. too. And, mm -hmm. and um, so, but that church, I'm trying to remember. I can see the colors and I can't, is that the one that has the two land, the, the, it's landscapes on the side and it's yes, the it figure is. in yeah, the altarpiece? Yeah. And then the, the medieval was moved to the side yeah, yeah. and you change the color of yeah. the, the color of the pews mm -hmm. and every, it, it, it's a whole um, thing. I mean, it's, it's mm -hmm. again that concept the of the whole space. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. you did a carpet there yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. And the windows. Mm -hmm. I know the wonderful one, the white window on the mm -hmm. side with yeah. the, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. When did you start doing the stained glass? Is well, that? Yeah, it was in, in relation to the churches, the work with the churches, that I did that. Because it, it's fantastic with the light coming mm -hmm. and changing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, again, you, you can't know, you have to believe. And if you try to touch those points of colors, you cannot you get can't. them. You, know, you, you have to, to see them, you have to open your mind to them. Do you know when you sit there in the church what the image is for that place? That's what comes to you, I mean, when you're yeah. in, in the silence. Yeah, in the silence, yeah. But then, you, as you said, there had been this particular church there. The board was very much like one side was really open and the other side. But I, as an artist, I have to respect those people yeah. yes. who has a, just another background. A lot of them have never seen art before. Mm -hmm. They are very like this. Yes. Uh, even before they meet me, I'm a... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I live in Paris, that's already, woo. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a woman artist, that's yeah. not good too. Yeah. Like, yeah. They, they don't like the woman priest. So we have a lot of things against us mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. But then, a little by little by little, yeah. then they start to open, and, and then it, it's, uh, it's a gift too, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they just say, okay, do it then. Yes, I think, um, I found that building a relationship is a really critical part of working with a church yeah. because you are um, coming into a community mm -hmm. of people, mm -hmm. and and they're an organism, you mm -hmm. know, and and yeah. you need to a living a organism, living organism. Mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, and you need to see you're doing a work for them that's going mm -hmm. to speak to them. Mm -hmm. That's where trusting God is really really important, <laughs> because I can't yeah. do that on my own. I don't know what's going to speak to them in the way that certainly I mean God can uh, is in that process. And, but building that relationship, and there's a lot of education mm -hmm. in bringing, because they are often ignorant, and you, yeah. you need to teach. It isn't, mm -hmm. um, sometimes minds are closed just because they don't know another way. And in the gentleness, mm -hmm. which I'm mm -hmm. sure you bring, mm -hmm. um, just meeting you briefly, that, that softness, then people open up, and yeah. they grow, and well, they learn. They're afraid. Yeah, yeah, of course they yeah. are. I've been thinking a lot lately about fear, mm -hmm. um, which is, we talked about just a little bit, is something Soren Kierkegaard wrote about pretty powerfully. Mm -hmm. um, and I've, I've been thinking about it in my own life, but also reading the Bible, you know, Saul was afraid. Mm -hmm. He was afraid of what the people would think. He was afraid of losing face. He was afraid of reproach, which is a term in the Bible often. And people are afraid. They're afraid of the new thing that they don't understand because it will reveal their ignorance or it will reveal their lack of sophistication or whatever. And they're also afraid that it might reveal something to them about themselves that they don't really want to know. Mm -hmm. And it's scary. And the whole Christian faith mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. because when you come, when you open yourself up to know Jesus Christ. He wants to come in and rebuild and transform you. And it's a process of, 
of recognition and repentance and, and forgiveness and restoration. And that is scary. Um, yeah. And so yeah. people are afraid, but they've already made a step when they say, well, let's, let's just talk to this artist, mm -hmm. see what this artist has to say. You know, maybe we need to do something because they have a kind of sense that, mm -hmm. that it's not right. Mm -hmm. But they don't even know, they don't know what's not right, but, but human beings are created in the image of God. So mm -hmm. somewhere deep in your soul, somewhere you kind of know, but oh dear, what could happen? We could have, you know, God knows what we could have. Mm -hmm. And ooh, and, and but, but they've made a step when they say, well, okay, invite this artist and we'll see. Mm -hmm. But then, then you have, that's I guess the obedience comes. <laughs> that, because yeah. it's obedience and, it and humility mm -hmm. to come and say, I'm your servant in a way. Um, but I am, I am who I am mm -hmm. and I bring, mm -hmm. I bring the gifts right. God's given me and what I've learned and what I've experienced. But I'm here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and then, well, people, respond to that, I think, mm -hmm. after a while. And to know deep inside yourself that the biggest sin is to give fear. Yeah. That's uh, like Kierkegaard say. And I know that my, I will never, that's for me the biggest sin really. Fear. But if I can, can give the light and yes. if I can give the feeling of that, that there are something good, yeah. I want to work for, for the good thing. Yeah. That's the only thing I want to. And when I meet people then, if they have this aggressive uh, attitude, it doesn't yeah. matter for me. Yeah. It's uh, I feel sorry for them. Yeah. And um, often I have tried when they, they are aggressive like this, just to talk a little bit. And humor is not a bad thing. No, no it's a good thing. <laughs> it, it could be. Yeah. 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 Takes the, yeah. But I have one of the most lovely um, works to do that you saw in in Denmark, out in Frederiksberg, there's a, a cloister mm. for, yeah. where they asked me, 11 nuns asked me to come and look at the space. And it was not that most lovely space. There was seven big windows and they asked me to come in. And they are not Protestants like me, but they asked me to come in they asked me to look at those seven big windows and they asked me to, to do what I thought I, I had to do. And they would find the money and I could do it whenever I wanted it to, to be done. This is the most wow. wonderful, um, really experience I ever had. You're so wonderful. And then I did it and I saw immediately there, I saw it had to be the seventh day of the creation. Mm -hmm. And there I made it in stained glass windows. And it's my most wonderful experience, the churches. And those 12 nuns. I'm not in Denmark one single time without going out yeah. and see them yeah. oh, and having wonderful. coffee and, and cakes with them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and this church, there are so many people coming into this and they are all talking about the faith. And it's not, uh, it's, it's not people, some people without any uh, believe or anything, but they just want to come in. And then when they have come in, they start to talk. And their art has a big, uh, yeah. a big job to do, because then suddenly you have something to talk about. Yes. And you get a language yes. you can you know, try to. And then people come in and there are school classes coming in. And, and to I, see the yeah, art. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's they hear the story of the creation. Yeah, and, yeah. They and then they otherwise. start to find out, and mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, it's it's. And they're hearing well, now they're doing some thing. more work, right? Yeah. Did yeah. did you do the windows before you started doing the paintings? Because Maya's mm -hmm. painting through yeah. those days of creation. Yeah. As yeah, well, I in some them, shows, she's them, done other yeah, shows yeah, in between. Yeah, but, but I did them first. Those were your the first. The windows were first. first. Yeah, yeah, and then paintings. I did the, yeah. Oh, then the paintings yeah. came after that. Well, and it's, it, it's so natural for me. I never yeah. use my brain. I never use that. Even if, of course, every one of my paintings have a title. There's always a motive, but I don't search it. It comes to me. Mm. 
and it, it feels right when I, when I say yes now. This is a, suddenly it's a lake, and when I have done the lake, there was a burning bush, and then there was a tumulus coming. It's, and I know just I, I, I like following what, what, I, what I hear I, I have to do. Mm -hmm. So your painting is a res uh, process of responding yeah. to what's happening. Yeah, yeah. And I cannot only make one. If you imagine that I should make only one painting of the yeah. burning bush, no, it's, it's no. not. No, there have to be a whole family of uh, burning bushes. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly it's finished. And you're done. And and then, yeah. And then something else will show up. Mm -hmm. in my heart and then I just, I, I do what I have to do. Yeah. When, you, when you did the, uh, there's a wonderful stained glass window in New York at the Danish Siemens Church, mm -hmm. which is kind of the Danish center in, yeah. mm -hmm. in New York. And um, it is just glorious in this building that you're not expecting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and it's, it's Christ walking on the water, mm -hmm. which there's an altarpiece too, isn't there? It so, is so that motif, did, did that begin with the Danish, with the church, or had you done it, paint it? The motif comes. Yeah, it, the motif comes, yeah. yeah. And then I, I just have to do it. Mm -hmm. And now the, the church have an altarpiece, where before it was just more a, a lovely place and mm -hmm. yeah. a, a room to, to meet, but now it's a church. Wonderful. Yes. Now you do other things in a church. You've talked about the so stained glass mm -hmm. and the rugs and the altar pieces, which are really, I think, fascinating because they are they are juxtaposed or they're with uh, frames from mm -hmm. ancient altar pieces. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so you're putting the modern, yeah. the contemporary, yeah. and the ancient together, and it's stunning. Mm -hmm. It really works. It mm -hmm. really works. Um, and this but you have to do with deep respect for the place, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for those mm -hmm. old things in the room. Right, right. Going back to nearly hundreds, yeah, hundreds yes. of years mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there are also other things that you do, like the, um, the sacred vessels, the chalice mm -hmm. and the patent, mm -hmm. the plate for the Eucharist, and vestments, the, mm -hmm. the garments that yeah. the priest wears. And um, and other other elements that you've mm -hmm. done uh, the pictures yeah. and things like that. Tell us a little bit about that and how that fits into your process. Uh, there, I have to work with other people. Yeah, and it's not so easy. No, it isn't, isn't. no, no, no. That's the most important thing at all for me is my paintings. It's the most serious. It's where I know I I really. Um, the most honest, the most true, the most uh, deep uh, inside myself, um, humble. And then I have the other works where I have to do, as you said, some of the uh, garments and, and all this. And then I have to work with really good people. But still, you have to tell them your things. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. so telling pictures, it, it's not easy, and, and, and the carpets, but then I have I, a fantastic place in, in Paris who make my, my uh, tapisseries, and they, I give them only my, my little sketch like this, and they have to put it up in five to six meter, but they go totally into my work, mm -hmm. and I give them space to, to imagine Mm. Not to, they, they don't have to make a reproduction in bigger scale. Mm -hmm. They have to go into my work yeah. and they find all materials put into it. And it gives them the, really the joy of doing it. And then I go there once a month to see how everything is working out, but they are doing it even better than that mm. I ever could have done it. There's yeah. coming some extra things to this. Wow. And when I do my ceramics, it, I make some big, also for, for a church, um, relief, also mm -hmm. in bronze. Mm -hmm. And I like to this physical thing also. When I'm really, I love to make, I have made one eight meter long uh -huh. landscape in, in clay. 
And I really want to fight with this, yes. really. Yes, yes. And, and make a, a landscape with the soil and, the, and, and all this really. I go out in nature finding trunks and I push it and I, I do all this. And then I have to, of course, to glaze it and find colors. And, and if you know something about ceramic, when you have the colors, it's a, maybe a light red. When it's burned, it will be like, like this red. Mm -hmm. And you have always, they say, now it's like this, yes. and when it's burned, it's like that. So you don't know where you are at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. And they say, they make a, a little list for me. Here you can see this will be like this and this. And I say, OK, fine. <laughs> and then when I go out, I just mix it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I can't work like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, when it's finished, it will be like this. No, I can't. Yeah. So I just totally mix it and I pray to God. Help me. <laughs> but the good thing in ceramic is you can burn it one more time. <laughs> if it's really it's a nightmare, you can put it in again. But it's fascinating too because it is a little bit of playing too. Yes. And when I'm in my studio and alone, I'm really not playing. But when I do this and someone is coming too close to me, it's just do like yeah, this yeah. so he will get a <laughs> but, <laughs> but in my Peter. studio it's really no he's not allowed at all. Not at all. No, 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 no Peter. No, 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 no. <laughs> but it's a little bit physical and a little bit fun. Mm -hmm. A little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. I try to and then I have some good girls who help me make the embroidery. So fantastic. And I and I really do so much admire people who who can put all the work and all the skills into something for me. Yeah. Because it is a problem in Denmark, yeah. because if I could never have anyone to do my carpet, uh, tapisserie in Denmark, because everyone who do tapisserie want to do her or his own work. They don't want to do my work with me. Right. But then we still have in France a tradition about working together with an artist. And like in, in Italy, where I do my bronzes, they want to work with an artist. Mm -hmm. So they do all the technical things, they have all this skill, and I come with my, and together we make something fantastic. I mm -hmm. couldn't do what they can right. do, and they can't. Right. That's a, a respect. Yes. But this is, mm -hmm. uh, this you can't, only the cerama ceramic place in Denmark, they, they allow you to come in and they will help you. Mm -hmm. But it's very, very it's, rare. It's, yeah, it is. And it's hard to give up yeah. your hand over yeah. your thing for someone else. I yeah. find that in bronze, the foundry. Yeah. Yeah. Does, I chase my own waxes, but mm. they do the bronzes. And I'll, yeah. I'll draw with a marker. No, this isn't matching the texture. Mm -hmm. There's, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. But it's, it's I, I want to, you know, pick up that Dremel and do yeah. it myself. Yeah. But I can't, no. I, you know, this I don't know how to weld. I have but to, it is. You it's have a a respect for those the, people, yes. but still. The trust is it's important. It's still, a, it's still, it's you have to trust God. It's still a, to how you describe your own experience, though. Mm -hmm. You sit and you see it. Mm -hmm. And there has to be the moment when it's clear and it comes to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you are receiving it mm -hmm. from yeah. God. Yeah. Um, and through the space, I and mean also through, I think, God speaking in your spirit, in when you're in the space and in the silence. Mm -hmm. But then, so what you're looking for is people who approach their art the same way you do. Mm -hmm. Because they, they have the skill, but maybe not the imagination mm -hmm. in that way. And so they are, receiving from you mm -hmm. the same way you're receiving from the space and from the spirit of God in you. So it's, it's, it, it is and it, it both, they both take humility. Yeah. They, they really do. I, but I when you find word. people who have this sense of listening and give space and then they put in, then it's a miracle. Yeah. Then you mm -hmm. can do miracles mm -hmm. together. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you're humble, both of you, yes. and I come with my, and they come with, me, and then it's like double up in a way. Mm -hmm. But it's so rare, so rare, mm -hmm. because they don't want to listen, and they, don't, they want to do it their way. There's so much ego. And then ego. you're already, oh yeah, no, so this much is ego going to be and... problematic. Well, it, 
it's the Christian story, though, isn't it? It about, is, yeah. The, the fall is about that. Yeah. It's about wanting to be our own gods and yeah. my way or the highway. And mm -hmm. God says, no, the highway is not going to be very comfortable. It's, mm -hmm. <laughs> it needs to be my way mm -hmm. with you, yeah. and then through he, you. He asks us yeah. to empty ourselves, which yeah. is what you do in yeah. order to receive mm. from God and it's be able to way. produce this. I can't do anything by myself. I'm going home soon to paint, and I have no ideas, I have nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm starting from the beginning, and I know it have to be like that. Yeah. I would be very scared if I could make a painting from the morning to the evening. Then I would know this is not good, this is not true, because it is not like that. Wow. I have to go this period through. The struggle. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like a bush of thorn that you go in and you get blood all over. But you, have, and <laughs> yes. it's like knowing there are some paintings waiting for you on the other side. You have to go through this, and mm -hmm. there's no easy way. Right. So that for you, in 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 one way, there's no difference between making a painting for a church or for the art itself. No, it, it is the all. same process. Yeah. And I'm the same person. Yeah. Even the same if I person. paint or yes. I don't paint, or if I'm out in nature, if I'm here. And mm -hmm. that's, I have to be 100% where I am now. Yeah. That's all what it is about. Not to think about yesterday, problems tomorrow, to be here now, mm -hmm. this moment. That's all what it is about. If you are present, now, today, here, then the possibilities, then it's your, it's, it's, it's your day. Mm -hmm. Time present and time past. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great it's if the whole world... present time future. Say that again. No, time future and time past is present in time present. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. So, T.S. Eliot, no the four fear. quartets. Yes. And yes. there's yes. no fear. Yeah. Fear doesn't exist. Yeah. Be not afraid. Mm -hmm. so what it's making me think like of the Christ of like life, that. the life of Christ, who yeah. God came mm -hmm. into, in some ways, became a blank sheet of a baby. Mm -hmm. And what was it like for the Son of God to grow up with all the things that human beings have mm -hmm. to do? I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, Christ in toilet training, Christ, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, all that, all those things. Mm -hmm. Like C.S. Lewis says somewhere, that's you know it'd be like you becoming a slug, mm -hmm. for God to become a human being, mm -hmm. and He did, mm -hmm. and experience as He's tested in every way, like as we are. He, and we needed a great high priest who'd been through it all, mm -hmm. and of course He goes through the ultimate humiliation. I mean, it's humiliating. Mm -hmm. God humiliated mm -hmm. Himself yeah. for us, mm -hmm. and paid that price mm -hmm. to create the. <laughs> the new creation, the kingdom of God, the new life to mm -hmm. vanquish death, mm -hmm. which in a way, I mean, I'm just thinking about this, listening to you, but the art, an artist is vanquishing death mm -hmm. in a sense. I mean, it's, it's not the same as Christ's sacrifice mm -hmm. does, but you're going, you have to empty yourself. It mm -hmm. says Christ yes. emptied mm -hmm. himself it's hurting. and had to do that. Mm -hmm. And then out of that, comes his sacrifice, mm -hmm. but that sacrifice is the, you know, the, the, the darkness that becomes beauty. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, as T.S. Eliot says again in the Four Quartets, and yet we call this Friday good. Mm -hmm. It is good, mm -hmm. painful, hard, mm -hmm. and humiliating. You're the Son of God hanging on a cross, dying, mm -hmm. and yet out of that comes the resurrection. Mm -hmm. And out of the resurrection comes light and life and and the kingdom of God now and future. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're living in the f this moment mm -hmm. is is part of the future. Mm -hmm. It's the moment when I get the Catholic doctrine of transubstantiation. And Eliot says it too, and he was a Protestant. But this present moment is the only moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And. And that's what you're talking about. And for Christ, the present moment is the only moment. We can't begin lost in the mystery of the mind of God, as Calvin says. How that works, I have no clue. <laughs> I have no yeah. clue, but it does. That's the thing. And you, I only know it when I write, because sometimes I, 
it is the, how to begin something either comes to you or it doesn't. Mm. And sometimes something really, I can't think of the right thing. So I write the wrong thing because yeah, you have to write something. Nice yeah. And then you get somewhere and then finally maybe you go back and you go, oh gosh, that's so Same horrible. Process. But, it, but, but then you just throw it out yeah. and, and I did it recently with something I had to do and I still want to work. Mm -hmm. but, but, but then something came that was the right thing, the right place to go into whatever it was. But you have to, and it's hard and you don't like, my son doesn't understand why you have to edit. He said, well, you know, you're not Zeus and Athena isn't going to come whole out of your head, you know, it's just not going to happen. You have to, writing is rewriting and reworking it and it's painful, but you have to be willing to go through the pain, which is part of what the congregations go through. When they're fearful, they know something, they know that they've got this church and they also know it's, there's something not right. And, um, they really need be not afraid. Mm -hmm. I go before you always, yeah. which means they have to empty themselves too That's right. to take the, the risk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. Yeah, it, it comes at, at a great price mm -hmm. uh, for the artist. Mm -hmm. uh, for but it's why I don't to. make a crucifixion because it doesn't end there. Yeah, it's a process. If there was no resurrection, there was no faith. And I could never, if you Sunday after Sunday after Sunday should s sit there, then, yeah. then there was no hope. Yeah. You have to, to know that the resurrection it's is good. the most important thing. Yeah. Otherwise there was no Christianity no. at all. Because you can believe up to that, that you crucified Jesus because he was dangerous. All this you can understand. But you can never understand the, the resurrection. Yes, yeah. you have to believe. Yeah. That's a big difference. Yeah. And, and Paul says it, if Christ be not raised, we're of all mm -hmm. men most miserable. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. Just yeah. we. And mm -hmm. the early church knew that. They lived in, mm -hmm. in yeah. that yeah. hope of resurrection. Yeah. And they faced death fearlessly mm -hmm. because they knew yeah. in that deep, ineffable way mm -hmm. that they would be raised as Christ was. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. And, it's, and it's scary. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, if you're with someone when they're dying, as mm -hmm. I know you've been and you've been and, mm -hmm. and I've been, mm -hmm. um, that moment when you know this is beyond my control <sighs> and it's a point of needing courage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's disorienting. To die. But so. having that feeling, being next to God, that even if you are alive or you are dead, He's here, He's just around me, mm -hmm. and He takes care of me. Mm -hmm. Then there is no fear. Yep. Right. I'm standing so next to Him. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. Then yep. everything else doesn't really matter. No one can hurt me, really. Having that gift in your heart, I have no fear. Yep. And that's the most important thing for me at all. Yeah. More important than being an artist and being, my faith is the most important thing and the most important gift in my life. Yeah. This no one can take from me. Yeah. It's the, it enables you to get up in the morning. Yeah, mm -hmm. and be thankful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look out and pe the nature is just out. I was sitting here out seeing those small, Hummingbirds, yeah. small, <laughs> happy hummingbirds, yeah. singing about Kierkegaard's yeah. lily and the birds on the field and the lily. On, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. If you get thankful, mm -hmm. it's a big step it's in your life. Yes. A friend yes. of mine once said that you know a person is a Christian if they're thankful. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's the mark. It's, it's, uh, it's so much, mm -hmm. so much. It, it took me a while to be thankful mm. for California, which is a long story. <laughs> yeah. California does yes. have seasons other than fire, mud, and whatever, but um, fire, That's mud, fire, <laughs> mud, mudslide. Anyway, um, yeah. but, it, but there are, and I've learned it's much more subtle because, well, California is a desert. And of course, I've learned to love the fact that, and long to come home because it's not cold. Mm -hmm. you know? um, but the other thing is California has all these flowering trees. Oh. Mm -hmm. And you know, I grew up in the Midwest and we had 
wonderful seasons and that whole sense of resurrection in the spring mm. when the buds come out. I mean, there's nothing like that. Mm. But in California, it doesn't have that. It doesn't have that. But it has these amazing trees, Beautiful. all kinds, like the bottle tree out here with those brushes. That look, they call it bottle brush. That's the, and they look like bottle brushes, but they're bright red, and they're so fun. And then there are the, the yacaranda trees, which are, have these wonderful purple blossoms. And, and you know, and I got, I thought, you know, Bert, this is pretty wonderful. Maybe you should yeah. just get with the program here. <laughs> this is really quite wonderful My and be thankful. My eyes are rolling around yeah. when I see all this. Yeah. And you have the Pacific Ocean. Yes. The light over this the, ocean. The you have the waves. Yes. You have... It's glorious. There's the so sunset much. every the night. Sunset. is sunset. I look at the sunsets often and I think it's a Maya Lisa painting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, they, but they're never the same, two never. nights in a row. No, no, and not. even when it's steel gray, yeah. the shades of gray, yeah. and then the shades of gray in the water yeah. and the sky, it's, it's, it's a thing of beauty. Yeah. And That's of course, why you have to be silent and see it yeah. and yes. open your mind and your heart and, and your eyes and listen and see those sunset and sunrises. Yes. It's a gift. Yes. Well, you just have to say moment. yes to it. Yes. Well, every I moment. every moment. Yeah. yeah. The the talking about gratitude and and the gift um, is a perfect place to end. And this has been a really sacred time. Yeah. Uh, we talk. There's there's beauty in this, and I'm so grateful to have been here to witness this and to and to hear your heart both of you. Um, thank you for having the courage to sit in the silence and uh, to be a vessel that God has used. Thank you for the faith uh, that that has. And thank you so much, Roberta, for um, bringing these artists into our world and, and um, promoting their art because we are truly rich because of it. Thank you.